Today, we are going to tackle one of the most useful but also confusing features of ExpressLRS, Model Match. And you probably know Model Match as that thing that I had to turn off because when it was on, my receivers wouldn't bind. Yeah. That's most people's experience with Model Match. But it turns out that Model Match solves two fundamental problems, and I, I don't understand how it works. I'm going to figure out how it works, and I'm going to show you how it works, and I'm maybe going to convince you that you ought to turn it on. I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're going to learn something today. There are two fundamental problems that Model Match solves for you. And I'm telling you this at the front of the video because we're going to slog through some technical stuff before we get to the end of the video. And I want you to know going in here why we're doing this. And the first fundamental problem that Model Match solves for you is that when you go into your radio's model selection dialog, all of these models that are set up to use the ExpressLRS module will bind to all of your ExpressLRS receivers. Let me demonstrate. Got a quadcopter here with an Express LRS receiver in it. So I'm going to load my Express LRS model here on my radio. I'm using the Radio Master Boxer, but this is the same for all OpenTX and EdgeTX radios. So don't let the fact that my screen might look a little different from yours bother you. I'm going to load up that model. And if when I power up my quadcopter, no surprise. We can see here we've got RSSI, and if we go into the Express LRS Lewis script, we can see that we have a C here in the upper right that shows that we're bound and connected. That's as expected. But I'm going to go into the model screen, and I'm going to make a brand new model, and I'm going to set the internal module to Crossfire, which is what you need to use the internal Express LRS module in this uh, radio. And sure enough, look, it is bound. So the first problem that Model Match is going to solve for us is that your radio doesn't care which model is loaded at the time that you power the quadcopter up. All the radio cares about is that the correct protocol is selected for the internal or the external module, Express LRS, Crossfire, etc. And as long as that module is active and as long as the receiver is bound to that module, you can have any model in your radio loaded and the radio will still bind and things will still work. Here's why that's a problem. Because you might have one quadcopter like this, which is a long range seven inch, and another one like that, that is a freestyle five inch, and maybe they're not set up the same. In fact, maybe the configuration is so incompatible that by loading the wrong model, you create a safety issue. So one of the things Model Match is going to do is it is going to prevent us from powering up the wrong quadcopter with the wrong model loaded in the radio. But there's another thing that is ExpressLRS specific that Model Match is going to solve for us. If we go into the ExpressLRS module here, we can see all of the options like the packet rate, the output power, the telemetry ratio, and so forth. And those options also might be unique per quadcopter. For example, I might have a racing drone that I use the packet rate 1000 hertz. I might have a long range drone where I need max range and I turn that all the way down to 50 hertz. I might have an aircraft with servos. And in order to get the full output range of the servos, I use the 100 hertz full mode. There are Express LRS options that might be unique to the aircraft that we're flying. And the other thing Model Match is going to do for us is it is going to let Express LRS change those options depending on which receiver we bind to, depending on which, which aircraft we are flying. The first thing we need to do to get Model Match working is to go into the Express LRS Lua script and turn Model Match on. And if you just do that and don't do anything else, then none of your receivers will bind. Because the receiver also needs to have model match turned on. And if the radio has model match turned on and the receiver doesn't, then they won't bind. So we're going to go ahead and turn model match on in this, in this module. And then we're going to need to go into the receivers and do that as well. I'll show you how to do it. To configure the receiver, we're going to go to the web interface on the receiver. And in order to do that, we need to have the receiver LED fast flashing. And you can either do that by powering up the receiver by itself and waiting about 30 seconds, maybe more, maybe less. Or you can go into the Express LRS Lua script, scroll down to Wi-Fi connectivity, and then enable RX Wi-Fi, assuming the receiver is bound. Once the receiver is in Wi-Fi mode, you'll go to your laptop, your phone, your computer, and look for the ExpressLRS underscore RX Wi-Fi network. 
You connect to that with the password ExpressLRS, all lowercase, and then you open your web browser and go to 10.0.0.1, or you can go to ExpressLRS underscore RX dot local. Either of those will work. Sometimes that web browser will automatically open. Sometimes you'll have to open it manually. Once we've got that web page up, we can see we are connected to the receiver. Here's the Happy Model EP receiver, and we're going to scroll and we're going to look for the, here we go, model. Yes, enable model match. So we're going to enable model match here. And we need to assign this receiver a model ID. And the model ID is simply going to be a number between 0 and 63. So we're going to just give this, well, here's the thing. All of my models that I've created so far have, model, have receiver number 0 assigned to it. So I'm not going to use that. I'm going to start with number 1, and I'm going to work my way up as I start actually using model match. There's nothing special about model number 0 or receiver number 0. It's just another number. But since I've already used that in a bunch of cases, and I kind of don't know what it's used for, then I'm just going to start with number 1. So we're going to give this receiver model number one and hit save. By the way, notice that now that I've turned model match on in the Lua script, instead of the radio binding, I'm getting an error, model mismatch five, and the receiver is doing a one, two, three, triple blink of the light. That one, two, three, triple blink means that the receiver wants to be bound, but it can't because model, model match is enabled and the models aren't matched correctly. So I'm going to go down and select this model, which I've named ELRS 50 Hertz. Uh, the idea is that this might be a model that I would use for long range, low packet rate, and I might use a different model for high packet rate, like freestyle or racing. We'll load this model, and we'll go into the model setup screen, and I will go up to internal RF. I want that set to crossfire. And I'm going to go down, and here is the key parameter, the receiver number. If I set this receiver number to a number that matches the model ID that I set in the ExpressLRS web page, then they should bind correctly. So that's how to get model match working. Step one is you assign a receiver number to one or more aircraft. So the receiver number can be shared across multiple aircraft. I could put all my five inch freestyle rigs as receiver number two, or I, that, that would assume that they were all set up the same, the exact same channel mapping, the exact same aux modes, so that I could use the exact same model on them. Uh, and then I could have all my long range seven inch rigs be receiver number three. I could have my, uh, my wing, if I have a fixed wing, I could that be, have that be receiver number four. You can have one or more aircraft for each receiver number, but all of the aircraft that share a receiver number will share certain characteristics so that they can have the same model on your radio. And one of the characteristics that they're going to share, and this takes us to the second thing that I said uh, Model Match solves. So far in this tutorial, we've been playing with the ELRS 50 Hertz model that I created. And it's a little bit mismatched because actually, that we've actually been using the receiver on my freestyle rig, which I would use a higher packet rate for. 50 Hertz is more for long range. So now that we've got the seven inch plugged in, let me show you how easy it is to sort of shuffle these numbers around once they're set up. I'm gonna go into the ExpressLRS Lua script. So here in the ExpressLRS Lua script, I'll just kick on the Wi-Fi connectivity of the receiver, and we will go to elrsrx.local. In my phone's Wi-Fi configuration, I will find the ExpressLRS RX Wi-Fi network and connect to it. Again, password, all lowercase, ExpressLRS. And it's asking me to sign into the network. And as soon as I do that, boom, there's that page automatically brought up. So now I'll go into the model screen and I will enable model match for my long range and I will give it model ID three and save. So somewhere you're gonna to wanna to keep track of this. Model number two is my uh, 250 Hertz freestyle rigs. Model number three is my long range, however you set it up. Once we've done that, we will then go into the model screen and we will set them up accordingly. Uh, so three, I just gave model number three to my long range. I think I've flipped them back and forth a couple times. But I just gave model number three to my long range rig. So that's going to be 50 hertz. There's my 50 hertz model. It is number three. And then we're going to go to my 250 hertz freestyle rig. And I'm going to give that receiver number 
2. After I've assigned the receiver numbers to the receivers and the models, the next thing to do is to set ExpressLR up how it wants to be. And this is the second problem that I said this model match solves at the beginning of the video. Um, because normally, if I go into the ExpressLRS Lua script, and I change the packet rate from 50 hertz for long range or 1000 hertz for racing or whatever, that change stays how it is. And if I later plug in another quad, it'll have the wrong setting. And this can really matter, especially in Betaflight 4.4, where the RC link and feed forward settings, if you don't have them set correctly, you can get like jittery motors, hot motors, really bad flight. So taking a quadcopter that was set up for 50 hertz and accidentally having the packet rate set to 1000 hertz can be really bad. The nice thing is that now that I am connected, oh wait, I do need to get connected, hold on. Ah. The nice thing is that now that I'm using model match, do you see how down here it says model match on ID2? What that means is that any of the changes that I make to the ExpressLRS configuration are only going to apply to receiver number two. So I said that receiver number two is gonna be my freestyle one and it's gonna be 250 Hertz, great. And now we will go back and we will load up the 50 Hertz model. We will go into the ExpressLRS Lua script and notice that now it says receiver number three. So any of the changes I make here will apply to receiver number three. I'm gonna knock that down to 50 Hertz. Okay, now watch this. I'm gonna load up my long range model and I'm going to plug in the quadcopter. It will connect correctly. And if I go to my Express LRS Lua script, you can see that my packet rate is 50 hertz and my TX power is one watt. I get done flying that long range model. <sighs> Oof, I think I'm gonna do some freestyle racing now. I plug in, but I forget to change models. The receiver will not bind. Well, it'll kind of bind, but it won't actually work. We'll get the error message. Why, why isn't it working? Why isn't it working? Model mismatch, model mismatch. Blink, 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 blink. Oh crap, I got the wrong model loaded. Good thing I didn't go fly. I go back out. I load the correct model. Did you hear the fan turn off there? That's because the settings have changed. Now I go in to my Express Alaris Lua script and I am correctly set to 250 Hertz and my TX power has changed to two. And that is the power of model match. I can't tell you. I've been running, this is why I made this video, because I've got some long range quads. Well, do I do long range really? I've got some quads where I fly longer range and I want them down at 50 Hertz. So I know that they're just not gonna fail safe. And I've got other quads where I want better, better latency and I set them to a thousand Hertz. And now beautifully, I can have those things automatically change, no problem. There is one thing I wish that you could do though. I wish that you could have the model set up the same, but the Express LRS settings change based on what receivers plugged in. See, all of the model settings, the switches and so forth, that's the same for all of my quads. We could have them all be on the same model. We just would want uh, the, the Express LRS options to change based on the receiver. I wonder if that's possible. Well, I just reached out to an Express LRS dev who confirmed that what I want can't be done under the current paradigm. And that leads us to a little bit more depth in exactly how this works. And I have to confess, I've been a little bit misleading to you about actually the way model match works. Let me explain. So remember I told you that certain parameters were stored based on the receiver number. Here's the complete list of those parameters. The packet rate, the telemetry ratio, the switch mode, whether model match is enabled or not. That's why uh, model match kept turning itself off when I changed the receiver number, the max power and the dynamic power. All other Express LRS options, whatever they may be, are global regardless of which receiver number you have loaded. But the thing that I was a little bit misleading about, because I thought it would make it easier to explain, is that all of those options are stored in the controller, in the transmitter, based on the receiver number. So as I change my receiver number from zero to one to two and so forth, do you see that my, my uh, packet rate is changing? And it turns out that that is actually true whether you're using model match or not. In other words, I can go into the ExpressLRS Lua script and I can turn model match off 
and I can still use those receiver numbers as kind of like a template for the parameters that I want to send to the ExpressLRS Lua script. With model match off, it doesn't matter what receiver number is on the receiver. It just doesn't matter at all. But the parameters that are sent to the ExpressLRS Lua script, like the packet rate and so forth, will change when I change that receiver number. So in theory, I could have a single model here in my radio, my Express LRS model, and I could go in and I could just change the receiver number here and see, okay, here's my 250 hertz freestyle one, here's my uh, 50 hertz long range one, I could do that. I'm not sure if it's not just faster to go into the Express LRS Lua script and make the changes myself, but the option is there. And now you know everything there is to know about model match and now we're going to do the thing that we were always going to do. We're going to go in, we're going to turn model batch off, we're going to get set our receiver number to zero, and we're going to forget that model match exists because it's kind of a pain in the ass. If you thought this video was fun, then I think you'll really like another ExpressLRS deep dive I did. ExpressLRS has no LQ threshold. What? What do you mean? At a certain point, aren't you just going to fail safe? <laughs> Go watch the video and see why, what I mean. It's not clickbait. And the companion video to that is about ExpressLRS's RSSI DBM threshold and how to know what to set that to. I've got cards on screen to both of those. Check one of them out. And I've got links down in the video description if for some reason you can't see the cards. See you there.